Today I'll talk about what I'll call a TLI antenna. So called because it's actually three antennas in one. A T antenna, which is a vertical with capacitive top loading, an inverted L, and finally just a straight vertical with no top loading at all. That looks a bit like an eye. There's 15 metres of wire, 5 metres for the vertical bit and 5 metres each for the two horizontal legs. Depending on how I switch it, I can switch those horizontal bits either completely out, one in, in which case the antenna forms an inverted L, or both in, in which case the antenna forms a T. The behaviour of those, the L and the T, are apparently quite different. An inverted L gives you both horizontal and vertical polarisation. So it's a good general purpose antenna for different types of distances and propagation paths. On the other hand, when the antenna is set up as a T, it's vertically polarised. And that's more suitable for longer distant contacts which come in at a lower radiation angle. So I can get as many tests as possible in a shorter time, I'll transmit RISPA. First of all on 7 MHz, trying the various antenna configurations, then 10 MHz and then 14 MHz. As a counter boys, I'm using railing straight over the water. Between it and the antenna coupler is this ground tuning unit that I've described in a previous video. You could use switches, bits of wire and string, or as I did, bits from circuit boards to form a switch at the top of the antenna. The most important thing, particularly if you're using thin wire and fishing rod supports, is that it's got to be very light. I think you said five and seven, I just missed the report. Is that a static crash at the wrong time? 
about five and seven, five and eight yourself. For fifty-seven, fifty-eight, I turned the little antenna towards you, so it might be a little bit stronger. But your five watch is doing very, very well from the end of the pier, over. Anyway, back to you, uh, Walker, and uh, uh, VK3 Yankee Echo portable on the pier, not too far from Melbourne, is uh, is it got a good signal with his five watch, but like, like, not likely you're hearing him. Anyway, back to you, Walker, and uh, if it's uh, if it's okay, we'll let uh, VK3 uh, MO in. VK3 MO, you can come in now, uh, in K6 MYC. Yeah, thank you, Mike. Anyway, for you, Volker, it is 3Y with um, K6MYC, pick the kilo 3 Mike Oscar. Okay. Yeah, morning, uh, Ian, good afternoon. And uh, PDR 4 and 5 on the peak. Readability for uh, 2 5. I uh, don't swing off strings 5 on the peak, so you, you're trying to noise me somewhat, but I do copy you, Peter. You are making the trip. These are the RISPA results with the three antenna configurations tested. Firstly, on 40 meters, in almost all cases, the T configuration, i.e. the five meter long vertical with the full 10 meters of wire included as a top loading, provided the best results. That was particularly the case for short distances, i.e. ground wave coverage and longer distances of 800 kilometers or more. However, there were some in-between cases where either the inverted L or just the five meter long vertical were superior. Overall though, the T configuration was best, followed by the inverted L and then the short vertical, which you would expect because it's only five meters long, which makes it just one eighth of a wavelength long on 40 meters i.e. much less than a full-sized antenna. You might notice the numbers down here at the bottom. What I did was I averaged the signal-to-noise ratios of the reports from the whisper stations. The T was best at minus 6.2 dB. Then the L at minus 11.1. .1. And then the short vertical at 9.1. Now note that the minus 9.1 appears to be better than the L, but it's because there are fewer reports and none from the further away stations. So that's a bit misleading. It's misleading to use average signal levels on Whisper when you're comparing it with a different sample. In this case, fewer stations and on average closer with stronger signals. Moving over to 30 meters and the differences between the different antenna configurations was less. Overall the T was a winner but the L was often close behind. The 5 meter long vertical with both horizontal sections disconnected was again the worst performer. I should mention that these tests are being done around 3 p.m. local time. A bit early for DX propagation on 7 MHz, but about the right time for 10 and 14 MHz. In terms of averages down at the bottom, the T and the inverted L were very similar at minus 19.5. However, more stations received my signal when I was using the T than the inverted L. Hence you can see there's more gaps in the inverted L columns. The short vertical had an average of minus 21.5 dB. In no case was it better than the other antenna options. 20 meters was the most successful. On the left I've got the 5 meter long vertical in this case, a full-sized antenna being a quarter wavelength long. The next two columns are the inverted L, 5 meters up and 5 meters across. And the last four columns are with it set up as a T, 5 meters up, fed at the center of a 10 meter long horizontal piece of wire, sometimes called an inverted ground plane.
the difference between the L and the T was generally not very much for most stations. The quarter wavelength vertical without top loading was again generally the worst of the antenna options tested. Except in one case with ORI 9 GHV where it was near the best. In terms of averages the T was minus 16.6, the inverted L minus 17.6 and just the quarter wave vertical was 19.2. To sum up, the T configuration was much better on 40 meters than the other antenna options. On 30 and 20, the T was still the best, although the inverted L was a close second place. The plain 5 meter vertical piece of wire was the inferior option in all cases.